Hey, this is American Lonsdale fan, and I just wanted to give a quick review on a course of study through Penn Foster, uh, because basically I completed their um, course in gunsmithing, got my certificate, and I just wanted to really talk about it um, in detail, and um, if you're thinking about it or you're considering any uh, online course for the skill of gunsmithing, kind of what to expect from the course from Penn Foster, and um, you know is it any good or is it at least for you so first off I wanted to talk about what uh, why I went ahead and did this course in the department I work for I'm the armorer and I like to kind of expand my knowledge the best I can there's just a handful of uh, online um, institutes that are considered legitimate and are considered decent for uh, training a student in, or at least teaching the student um, the skill of gunsmithing. But Penn Foster also uh, has a uh, a program in place for the skill of gunsmithing. What is Penn Foster anyway? Penn Foster is an online uh, school, university. Um, they basically cover a number of different uh, certificate programs or kind of prep people for their GED. They are a legitimate uh, school. They are given a high rating from the Better Businessmen's Bureau, but how is their gunsmithing course? Well, that's a loaded question. I'd like to just first off by saying we have to define what is a gunsmith. Um, here's my definition of it. I, at my job and in what I do out in the garage, I don't consider that gunsmithing. I'm an armorer in where I work, which means I assess, diagnose, repair, uh, replace. Um, what I generally don't do is I don't start taking or removing steel or shaping steel, um, things like that. That's what a gunsmith does, in my opinion, in terms, terms of truly customizing things or building things. Did the Penn Foster's uh, course of study and gunsmithing did it offer me anything will it offer you anything well that's what we're gonna kind of talk about and I'll just kind of give you my opinion you make your own decision this is kind of the um, setup um, for once you register um, at uh, Penn Foster so you got the home page and you've got a, a number of different uh, um, just resources for you and that was good to make it easier, what I decided to do is um, I had literally saved all the entire course material on PDF uh, little by little and I just wanted to go ahead and share them with you. Let's start with the program outline which will make it a little easier. You'll find out there's six sets. So it's called instruction set one, two, and so forth. Each set has uh, a number of different lessons. Each set has about a, anywhere from two to five lessons. Um, a number of different reading materials. Might have a couple of videos uh, for you to watch and at the end of every lesson will be uh, an exam and periodically there are little quizzes in between but every lesson plan has an actual exam that you must pass the question is is this something you you can really learn through an online course because keep in mind none of this is hands-on at all so for example look at uh, lesson 18 it's metal finishing and there's a in this lesson there's a whole section on old-fashioned bluing with the uh, you know with the bluing salts and uh, different um, pools to dip the parts in the steel parts in and if you know anything about uh, classic bluing of course you know that you not only need a huge space to work in you also need uh, a lot of fans a lot of uh, proper ventilation and depending on what state you live in you're gonna need a lot of permits or you're just not going to be allowed to do it either way so the question is is how can you really put this into a lesson plan because oops you're not going to if you think about it you're not going to get any hands-on 
work with it you're just kind of going to be learning about it so while we're at it when we i'll pop up a reading material here this was on customizing handguns if you just kind of look at the photos and maybe the highlights polishing the feed ramp yeah we're just talking about the good old-fashioned 1911 um, this is kind of very dated um, it's almost teaching you this this particular reading material is almost teaching you how to make the perfect 1911 for uh, Colonel Jeff Cooper how to take a standard GI model and make it more of a combat ready defensive pistol I'll give you another example you know anything about Glocks well that's not <laughs> certainly not a Gen 5 it's not a Gen 4 it's not even a Gen 3 I don't even think it's a Gen 2 so kind of gives you an idea how old this material is is it very dated some of it um, is timeless like if uh, here's a whole section about uh, uh, black powder uh, guns how to use them how to make them how to modify them and so forth um, everything about sights scopes and so forth i'll show you one thing here um, this was an interesting section it lends a question how many people who are actually doing this course actually have a whole machine shop in their garage most of us don't we've got a workbench we've got a couple of hand power tools we hopefully have all the screwdrivers and so forth we don't have a whole machine shop okay so getting back to the course itself um a couple of more critiques i had about it and especially because um, um when researching a bunch of different courses i looked at other um online schools for gunsmithing uh, found out a couple things is many of the other ones have different levels of gunsmithing uh, so for example they might have one course for just basic stuff and then you might have a um, intermediate or advanced so that that's a nice thing to to where the student can choose uh, what type of gunsmithing they're trying to do Penn Foster offers one course just gunsmithing and as I kind of showed you is they do the whole gamut of gunsmithing, little parts. Um, I think it would have been so much better had they um, did different levels and did a basic course and then maybe a more advanced one. Another critique I have about it is, um, like I said, it's a little dated in my opinion. Firearms market is really moved to what we'd call modular systems or uh, drop-in parts for lack of a better term so there's a reason the AR is uh, so popular it's because it's the most modular rifle currently out there for the most part um, your modern pistols starting with the Glock and then going through all your striker fire polymer frame if you think about it just about everything is a drop-in part now um, there's very little fitting most you might file a part here and there but generally as we all know we take the appropriate punch pins we punch the pins out we pull apart how a whole assembly say like a trigger assembly we buy a new one and we drop it in we're ready to go this course really didn't talk about it at all it's talking about it as if you are buying raw parts maybe and then literally fit and finishing them uh, to the frames and to the slides and so forth um, and to the bolts um something that is still done that's true but it, it doesn't explain anything about uh, some of the newer systems that's out there another critique i kind of have of the program is this um they had a, a member of academia write it for them or create it what do i mean by that just my opinion there's a big difference to me between education and academia academia we all know what it is it's your standard usually government run school systems all theory very little hands-on um, so we have uh, uh, students out there young people who know all about pythagorean theorem but they don't even know how to balance their checking account it's 
real world versus all theories. It's almost like somebody from academia put together this course. The final critique I have about that is there's a fair argument to be made is could I have learned everything that I did at Penn Foster through the internet, through um, things of that, um, or just reading or just researching? Yes, it was nice that somebody put together everything for me to look over, but ultimately I could have found it elsewhere. I don't think they did enough. I'll give you an example. I mentioned that a few of the lessons have videos. Well, when I say videos, I'm literally talking about s sections of maybe anywhere from two to five videos at no more than about four minutes each. Sometimes most of them less. Because the videos, even though the production values weren't that good, they were informative, but there wasn't enough. I didn't, I didn't understand why they didn't have more of that but for whatever reason they didn't. Okay, now that I've kind of did a lot of the, the critique and gave you all the bad stuff, is there any good stuff? Yes, there is. They always include things like the history of every subject, the history of every black powder firearm, every rifle, every pistol, um, ballistics, everything. They go into the history of it, which is which for me was nice. Um, so that's one good thing. Another thing is, I will say this is whoever put together the exams, because remember every lesson has an exam, not set, every lesson, every individual lesson has these ex uh, exams that are pass or fail. The exams are, are tough. They're 20 questions each, multiple choice, and you think, well, I know a lot about guns and firearms and so forth. It should be easy and I can just guess. Whoever put these exams together really made sure that the student has to read the material and be involved. You're not going to be able to guess. Um, giving an example, one exam, there's no way you could guess and pass because it was all about how to look up parts, specific parts, size, model numbers, everything in the Brownells catalog. And so the multiple choice A through D answers were all just catalog numbers. So there was no way you were going to guess that. You had to look it up. They wanted you to get used to looking up catalog parts. Um, I wouldn't say it was hard as long as you read it, as long as you understood it, um, but it did. the exams made sure that you were actually going to read this. You were not going to guess. The last thing that I did um, like about the course, Penn Foster is the least expensive out there. They have different payment plans, but you're still only going to pay a roughly a little over 800 bucks. Um, that might sound like a lot, and it is, but compared to other schools, it is still the cheapest. It was also very easy to sign up for. It was very easy to log into, very user-friendly. They gave you plenty of time to complete it. I said I had until this September to finish it. I finished it last month. So. so having said all that, is this course, Ben Foster's gunsmithing course, is it for you? If you're starting from square one, it serves as maybe a launch pad to kind of see what's out there. So if you knew nothing about uh, firearms and just really wanted to get into it, really wanted to see if you could work on them, it might give you the basic knowledge of it to use that as a springboard to move forward. I think something that would definitely work would be if you once again knew very little about firearms and maybe had a few of your own really wanted to get into it and you were already a machinist, you were already an engineer. Um, you, if you had a whole machine shop in your garage and you decide you know what I really want to get into gunsmithing this course would be great because now all you do is you take your previous experience and it's just guiding you into a new realm in, learn, in terms of learning gunsmithing. Because this was my first online course ever. I mean, I haven't been, I haven't been in a college setting since I, you know, um, earned my degree back in the 90, <laughs> mid 90s. So it's been a long time. This was the first time I really did the whole online course, um, and it's it was interesting. It was a good experience. I'm glad I did it. So anyway, that's all I got. Um, Hope that helped. Um, God bless you and those you love.